The next part in the writing of the wrong in Canadian history is this. The Chinese head tax redress issue. The $23 million collected up to 1923 in head tax viewed in today's terms would equal $178 million in purchasing power, or if invested at 6%, would yield $896 million. It took two years for the average Chinese worker in 1923 to earn $500. Our society is committed to work with the National Council and other chapters of the National Council in seeking redress from the government because our calculation shows that at least half of the registrants for the head tax comes from the province of British Columbia. Now I'd like to uh, introduce to you our national chairman, Mr. Gary Yee, to speak to you. Thank you. Chinese immigrants first came to Canada 130 years ago, and thousands of Chinese workers labored very hard to build Canada's national railway. However, right after the last spike was driven in 1885, Canada thanked the Chinese workers by imposing a head tax of $50, and this later rose to $500 by 1903. And at that time, $500 represented about two years' wages for a Chinese Canadian. The aim of the head tax was to both discourage Chinese immigration and yet to make money from it at the same time. And the motivation was clearly racism. By 1923, Canada had collected $23 million in those days dollars in head taxes. And this amount today would be worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So Canada collected this from over 81,000 Chinese immigrants. And at the same time, Canada was paying European settlers to settle our West. In 1923, Canada passed a law which stopped Chinese immigration altogether. And this exclusion lasted until 1947. And really, that's not that long ago. The impact of these 38 years of head taxes and then 24 years of exclusion cannot be underestimated. The Chinese Canadian community had its development severely hindered, and individual head tax payers also spent years paying off the crushing debt incurred by the head tax, either for themselves or for family members who they saved money to bring over. Also, in addition to the head tax, with the exclusion, most Chinese Canadians lived here for decades with little hope of bringing over their wives or their children. And our community became a bachelor society for many years. My grandfather was a part of that society. He came in 1917, and he paid $500 in head tax. He returned to China twice to see his wife, my grandmother. But he could not bring her over until 1952. And my grandfather is now over 90 years old. He's in a nursing home in Toronto. And I sometimes wonder if the government will respond to us in time for him to see that justice has been done. It has been over four years since the Chinese Canadian National Council received 2,600 head tax certificates from head tax payers or their families. It has been over four years since we formally requested the government of Canada for action in this matter. It has been over four years since the Progressive Conservative Party promised to support an all-party parliamentary resolution to recognize the injustice, the discrimination, and the suffering. This is an issue of justice, not just for head taxpayers or their families, not just for the Chinese Canadian community, but for all Canadians. And I call upon your active support to achieve a fair, and meaningful resolution to this urgent matter. Although our head taxpayers are very elderly and some have passed away, the issue will not die. 
When we met the Minister of State for Multiculturalism and Citizenship, the Honorable Jerry Wiener, on, on October 28th, he said he was sympathetic to our cause. He said he would bring the matter to the attention of the Prime Minister right away. And he said he would bring the matter to Cabinet after the federal election. We both agreed to leave the meeting with cautious optimism. But I want the Prime Minister to know we will not wait much longer. It has been over four years with a different multiculturalism minister every year. We cannot much longer. We cannot allow our elderly head taxpayers to just pass away one by one after having lived in Canada through decades of exclusion and separation and then not see justice done. We want action. It is only fair. The Head Tax Redress Committee in Vancouver has been very active, as Tommy Tao explains. One of the things that we have done is to go out and do a personal interview with those head taxpayers who are still alive that we could find, so that we can have a better understanding ourselves about what life was like when they came, how they felt about having to pay the head tax, how they feel now about the issue. Because of the lack of resources, we weren't able to interview everyone on our list, but we did try some. But the sad fact is, all of our head taxpayers are very elderly now. They're all, if not already in the 80s, very close to the 80s. We've started the issue four years ago, and we cannot wait much longer. Even if the government should decide to redress the issue, to offer personal compensation, the time is so short that if we don't take action now, redress will lose a lot of its meaning because redress in large part is indeed for those who have been discriminated against. As the forum progressed, the floor was open to the public and we took the opportunity to ask this question. I'm just wondering what kind of redress can be made to an individual that has probably already died, been forgotten, and nobody even knows who he is. What about the people that have no living relatives to take up their cause. For those who have passed away, um, also we would be seeking commemoration, such as uh, a plaque uh, where the last bike was driven, or a plaque in the House of Commons as a railway committee room in there. We will also be seeking those aspects. As you know, the head tax issue, I'm glad that the CCNC has brought it forward and the agenda after several years of discussing the issue. It's very important, I believe, as the Chinese, in the Chinese community, that the diversity of the Chinese community unify around this issue. But I think it's going to be very important that every segment of the Chinese community, particularly in Vancouver and nationally, be educated on the issue and support the issue. Um, because it is part, this will be the fine, one of the final chapters of, the, of our history. Therefore, I hope and I see here we've got one segment of the Chinese community, but the other areas of the Chinese community will come out and support this issue. We're here at the David Lamb Auditorium at the Chinese Cultural Center this November 6th day of 1988, where we were just treated to a very enlightening and informative forum on the Chinese head tax redress issue. There are many speakers here, and we were particularly proud that Gary Yi from the Chinese Canadian National Council was able to appear. Along with him were many speakers from political parties, as well as speakers from local Vancouver organizations. For more information on the head tax, or to support head tax redress, contact the Chinese Benevolent Association, 108 East Pender Street, Vancouver, BC, Victor 6 Bravo, 1 Romeo 8, 
or phone them at 681-1923. That's the Chinese Benevolent Association, 108 East Pender Street, Vancouver, B.C., Victor 6 Bravo, 1 Romeo 8, or phone them at 681-1923.